Mommy Rhea Ripley is injured and she vacates Women's World Championship. Lesbians gone wild in AEW with this three-way situation with Tony Storm, Mariah May, and Mina Shirakawa. Naomi defeats Tiffany Stratton to become the number one contender for Bayley. And Jordan Grace cooks Steph Lander and Matt Cardona. Welcome everyone to Rain Bell, this is DS and this is your Women's Wrestling Weekly. I am back from Philly, Mania is over, technically this is like a new wrestling year, and hope you loved our special interview with Foxy and Mickey James ahead of their match at her in Australia, they killed it in the ring. Congratulations to Vix Crow on your wrestling return, we really missed you in there. And of course, Damage Control, EO Sky and Dakota Kai interview, and you know we've got so much interviews lined up, but the wrestling does not have off season, we've got so much going on with WWE, AW is really popping up this week with storylines, so Let's get right into everything that's going on. On SmackDown, we had the new WWE Women's Undisputed Champion, Bayley, come out with thunderous You Deserve It chant. And she's a true babyface queen here. She thanks the fan for the 11 years of her career and motivating her every step of the way. And she is ready for this new journey to give out new opportunities. Watching this, I remember why she was such a good babyface back in the days. Like, she's one of the very few babyface that comes across so really genuine. But I do wish that she brought some fun aspects of her as a heel. Ding dong! Anyway, cues Tiffany Stratton back to her old theme song that I love more. And we gotta get to the bottom of this changing theme song saga. She talked about it in our interview a little bit. The music change I asked for. Yeah, I know everyone hates it. However, like, get used to it because it's my music now. <laughs> her clueless inspired gear was so freaking cute. And she says she's annoyed that she didn't get to be part of Mania, but it is Tiffy time now. And she accepts Bailey's open challenge, which she never gave out. And Bailey is like, awkward, this was actually not an open challenge. And reveals that she was actually gonna get. Get Naomi to be her challenger. With Tiffany going, she can't win a title if it glowed in the dark. And Naomi comes out all pissed off, a little bit because of Tiffany, but also because her husband got in some trouble earlier in the show. She says she can't accept Bailey's challenge yet because she's gonna beat Tiffany's ass. And this match was really fun. Naomi again is pissed as hell. She already lost to Tiffany like a month ago, so she came in super strong at her. Rapid fire, bulldog leg drop, split leg drop, everything. But Tiffany catches Naomi's second corner ass shake spot and reverses into Alabama Slam and attempts to prettiest moonsault ever, but misses and Naomi catches her with the jackknife pin for the win in 9 minutes. And just like that, Naomi's gonna get the championship opportunity next week on SmackDown. I was so scared that Naomi's going to lose again right after a WrestleMania win. And Tiffany, I love her, but she does not need an undefeated streak like Jade. She's still so fat, so popular, and this might be a very interesting three-way feud for Backlash, because we all know Bailey is retaining a Backlash. Then we got a tag match, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill versus Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, a follow-up to Jade destroying Chelsea on Raw. Jade's entrance, by the way, is probably one of the best women's entrances in the roster. Maybe the best entrance of all. The lighting, the smoke, the presentation is just so spectacular. And Bianca Belair here was wearing this matching lavender gear, which looks so cute. This tag team is like too much star power right now, but I guess they are tagging for a bit. Commentary will keep mentioning them as a tag team, saying that they will change the tag team landscape. If they're going to continue, they definitely will be. Piper and Bianca had a bit of a cute moment in this match. Even Piper doing that little hair stuff was really fun. But this was all all about Jade Cargill squashing Chelsea Green yet again. The chokeslam was bit of a miss, but that kick was brutal and she hits Jaded for the win in like one minute. It's a squash, but a delicious squash. Are people really annoyed that this match was short? This is like Jade's first week actually wrestling in WWE. Give her a break. I love Bianca and Jade as a team, probably at the strongest tag team in the history of tag teams, but we all know they'll have to split. Who do you think will turn? Either way, I'm very satisfied. So WrestleMania season is always so freaking busy for me. Like I was in New York, in Indianapolis and Philly all in a span of a month to get some big interviews for you guys. And when you're busy like that, it's really difficult to get healthy, delicious food. And that's why I'm so grateful for today's sponsor, Factor. The Monday's always busy for me because I'm like editing the review video and I'm watching Raw. So I usually deliver food, which is like getting really expensive. So Factor, just two minute microwave. I've been loving it. Look how delicious it looks. Eating chicken, watching Julius Creed wrestle. Mm. This is why I love Factor sponsorship. I literally love the food. It's so delicious. I was stress-free thanks to Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Look how good that looks! And it's so easy, no fuss, no mess. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Just simply heat and savor the good stuff. And I also love that I could tailor it to my schedule. With Factor, you can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get you as much or as little as you need. Just got back from workout, another Factor. I would plate it, but I'm too tired, so I'm just gonna eat it from the packaging. Full on steak here. 
Mm, it's good. Wait, this creamy tomato pork chop was so freaking good. Factor cuts down on grocery trips and cooking, so there's more time for you, and they offer nutritious options. I also really like their this wellness shots. It's like healthy juice in a shot form. But really, the most important thing, the meal, the food was delicious, and they were very filling. So please help me keep the sponsorship. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code Bell50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next box. That's code Bell50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. So when we're all, we got the shocking news, I'm still rattled by this, that Rhea Ripley, after more than a dominant year of championship reign and defeating Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 40, she vacates her title due to an injury sustained during her getting attacked by Liv Morgan last Raw. And seriously, injuries can happen in the most unexpected ways. Like, I thought it might have happened during that unhinged chair throw, but I guess it happened during when she was pushed to the wall, which I was like, huh, okay. Anyway, so Rhea opens Raw with the sling, and you can tell that she's really not happy about the situation, and she says when she comes back, she's coming back for some blood. She is pissed, you can tell. And you can hear the crowd booing Liv. Oh, Liv's heel era is coming. And then we see Liv come out to just laugh her ass off at Rhea Ripley with security separating the two, and frustrated mommy headbutts one of the security guys to finish this segment. And backstage, Judgment Day hugs Rhea, giving her a heartwarming send-off, and this was really cute, because she goes, te amo to Dom. Yeah. And later we hear from Liv Morgan. She does not understand why everyone's so freaking mad at her. It's her delusional era. She says it's eye for an eye, just like how Rhea took her out for eight months with the shoulder injury. She then says Liv Morgan Revenge Tour is only beginning and it ends as her as a champion. Yeah, obviously this freaking sucks that Rhea's long reign is ending like this with really no payback. So unceremonious, I still don't believe that this happened. But let's be positive. If we're really looking for a silver lining, it's almost perfect storyline-wise that Liv is so unhinged and thirsty for revenge, just like how Rhea injured Liv. And also for a long time, I think a lot of people just didn't buy Liv as a credible threat. That has been her issue for a very long time with the feud with Ronda Rousey and everything. But taking out the mommy like this with an injury, this adds some notoriety to Liv's name. And Liv fans have been screaming, it should be Rhea versus Liv. That's the money feud. Well, now it's canon. Rhea Ripley versus Liv is the money feud officially. So let's just look to the hopeful side. Mommy. We love you. Hope you recover well so we'll get this bomb-ass feud between the two. And then we heard from Nia Jax backstage, the title is hers, and everyone should be scared of her. She's right. She's, she's really right. And then, as I was thinking, I guess, like, we'll figure out what they're going to do later, the commentator just announced that the new women's champion will be crowned next week on Raw, and I'm just like, wait, what? Like, there's no tournament? There's, like, nothing? Yeah, they will be crowning a new champion. Not known if it will be Battle Royale, letter match, I don't know, like, tournament. It's very intriguing, and I love that they're just going right at it. They're going to crown the new champion right away. Who do you think will be the new champion? I guess it'll have to be between Liv and Nia, right? It's very interesting. I will be tuning in next week. We then got a tag match, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. Maxine Dupree was rocking this beautiful red gear inspired by Nikki Bella. And here, Maxine showed some cute moves moves, the Northern Light suplex with the bridge, and that DDT was really cute, but this was all about Indy walking the way with Candice, and we see Indy cheat and distract referee from seeing Maxine tag Ivy, then she big boots Maxine behind referee's back, helping Candice pick up a cheat win. Oh yeah, she made the right choice, she's walking with Candice, and I freaking love it. I'm satisfied. But also, now that the Women's World Championship is vacant, I really want to see Candice put herself in a title picture somehow. Let's do it. Then another tag match, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven versus Caden Carter and Katana Chance. And this match was pretty quick with beautiful teamwork between Chelsea and Piper, but mostly with Piper's heavy lifting, throwing Katana away from the ring and squashing Caden with the crossbody. Chelsea was able to pick up a win. I do have to point out, I did appreciate Caden's creativity again. She tried this new like shh chopping thing. Not sure if that was a dig at Chelsea's she thing or if it's like a new thing for people to hear the chop and count together. People did not count. It's Okay, at least she tried. I mean, not sure what this win means for Chelsea and Piper. Hope that means a big push coming. Honestly, this Raw was kind of like just there, I guess, before the draft. And we we're just kind of like floating around until we get the actual roster. So I think this was good. Uh, good? 
Not bad. NXT had tons of stuff happening. So we start out with the new NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez promo. By the way, apologies. I just did not have time to watch and film Stand and Deliver review in Philadelphia. I was working my ass off like every freaking day. And I unfortunately kind of lost my window for reviewing Stand and Deliver. But I just got to watch this match. It was so freaking good. I'm so proud of both of them. And Roxanne, I feel so dumb for being worried about her heel work. Giving a bit of Alexa and AJ. She just comes out here telling crowd doing the you deserve a chant to shut the hell up because she does not give a fuck about crowd anymore. I mean, NXT crowd, you pissed her off when you were booing her in front of Becky Lynch. That was embarrassing. But yeah, I freaking love her, how she was just owning the crowd, not letting them interrupt the champion at all. She says she didn't even care that Lara's arm wasn't 100%. And she even says that she's never going to lose a title because she's just going to give up when she gets drafted to Raw or SmackDown. She's such a good heel, does not give a damn. And the ex-champion Lara Valkyria comes out in an arm brace saying that she wants to use a rematch clause right now. Being all dumb, she's clearly not medically cleared. Then Tatum Paxley, Lyra's number one fan, emerges from the crowd. Then Lyra, like, apologized for yelling at her. I was just upset, but I'm all good. I can fight. Then Tatum goes, are you? Then shoves her into the stairs, screaming, it's not yours anymore. It doesn't belong to you. I don't even know what the hell is going on here. Was this her twisted way of protecting Lyra from further damages, or did she really turn on Lyra here? Not sure, but I'm excited to learn more about this. Then, as Roxanne was trying to leave, Natalia comes out. She has, like, residence year at this point, challenges the prodigy for the championship match because she's never held the NXT Women's Championship ever. And Ava, the GM, comes out to make this match official. So later in the show, we get this match and we see Natalia. I guessed so hard because her gear was some next level mothery. Like, what is going on? She really said, I'm going to get the sexiest gear possible when facing this kid, Roxanne. And this match was fantastic. Like, we know NXT Natalia hits differently, but this match might be one of Natalia's best matches ever. Natty and Roxanne had insane chemistry. And wrestling matches usually goes like this, you know, like ups and downs. But this match got me on a high for the last three, four minutes. Their back and forth was so good. And at the end, Roxanne like crawls out of the sharpshooter to the outside. Then when Natty was out there to get her, Lola Vice runs in and like very gently kicks Natty's leg. And I'm just like... What? If you're gonna cost this damn match, you better clock Natty, not that gentle tush toy. And using this opportunity, Roxanne hits Pop Rock for the win in 12 minutes. And Lola's just doing that unserious hip dance outside. I mean, this was an incredible match. I'm so, so freaking satisfied. And as Lola is cutting promo about how she's got her eyes on NXT Women's Championship, NXT Women's North American Championship, she gets attacked by angry Natalia, starting a huge brawl. Yeah, so if you missed it, they also just announced NXT Women's North American Championship will be coming to NXT at Stand and Deliver. It's a great, great decision given that there are so many women in NXT. And I wonder if Natty will be sticking around in NXT for a bit. We might be getting a Lola versus Natty feud or will Natty be involved with the North American Championship picture somehow? We'll see. Then we got Kiana James and Izzy Dame versus Kalani Jordan tag match following the six women tag match at Stand and Deliver where the Mean Girls lost. But here at the end of the match, Fallon tries to push Kalani out of Izzy's kick but gets hit with it instead. And Kiana hits Fallon with the 401k for the win. All four of the women here, I think, are like top contenders for the North American Championship. I mean, my personal pick will probably be Lash Legend. But even Izzy here, who started out a bit later than the other three, she really stood out during this tag match. Her gear was really, really really cute. This was a good match. I'm very satisfied. Then another match. We got a singles match. Jada Parker versus Brinley Reese. Brinley's gear here was really cute and unique and she's a great athlete. But I do think she's still trying to solidify her standing, her unique character, given that her current one feels a little bit somewhere in between Thea and Sol Ruka. I'll say the noteworthy thing about this match was the finish when Jada introduced yet another finisher. It's called Hip Check. It's like a hip attack, just not in a corner like other people. I mean... I don't know. This is like worst version of both rear view and corner hip attack. I'll say it's like improvement from before. I like the idea of using her assets for her finisher. I do like that. Um, she's got the right idea, but it's just not hitting quite well. Anyway, Jada picks up a win with that hip attack in eight minutes. Overall, very good match between the two. Both of them very talented and it has so much potential. I like what I saw mostly. I'll say Stratus 5. And backstage, we have this whole situation with Chase U where they were celebrating Thea, Kalani, and Fallon's win at Stand and Deliver and they award Fallon and Kelani with the honorary Chase U degree. Then JC comes in and tells Thea the reason Chase U went bankrupt, the reason they were broke was because of Thea all along, that Andre Chase placed a big bet on Hale at Great American Bash last summer against Tiffany Stratton and cause she lost, he lost all the freaking money. And after learning this shocking news, Thea leaves all angry. The drama. 
I love it. I have no idea where this is going, but this is intriguing. Wrestling needs more campy storylines like this. Let's move to AEW. Dynamite had so much stuff going on, I'm actually really shook. So AEW Women's World Champion Tony Storm hosts a champagne toast for her challenger, Thunder Rosa. And as Tony was getting ready for the toast, she just tosses the whole champagne into Rosa's face and she clocks Rosa with the tray and then rubs Thunder's war paint with a towel. Then Deanna Peraza runs out for the save, but Tony hides behind Luther. And as Deanna was trying to help Thunder Rosa get up, she could not see anything and she just shoves Deanna. And Deanna gets fing pissed and she's like, fk you and walks away. Deanna trying to help what? Yeah, Loving this three way situation, but there is another three way situation involving Tony Storm, which we'll be talking about. It is a threesome party here in AW. So Mariah May in Rockstar Tony Storm outfit comes out, and Tony's been in love with Mariah since she's been wearing her outfits. I think it kind of started out as narcissism, but it's turning whole lesbian y. Like she even showed up at stardom to congratulate Mariah. She kissed Mariah, and here she offers Mariah champagne, but Mariah's like, I got a match to do. So instead, she gives Mariah a big kiss on the cheek. Anyway, Mariah had a match with Anna J, who we see getting more and more frustrated throughout this match. She was keep going for pinning, but it just wasn't working. And at the end, Mariah reverses Anna's gory bomb into a roll-up for the win. But Anna, who just turned babyface like a couple months ago, gets all upset and locks Mariah in Queen Slayer. Then, surprise, Mariah's stardom partner, Mina Sirakawa, runs out for a save. She then gives Mariah a sip of champagne, then kisses Mariah on the lips, full-on lesbian style. What the hell is going on? I suspect I suspected Mariah Tony storyline might take Mickey Trish turn and get a little bit lesbian y, but this is some international three way full on lesbian jealous kissing extravaganza. Both Tony and Mina are fighting over love for Mariah. I'm honestly so shook. Not just because this is gay, but because this is really seeing full on stardom integration. AW bringing stardom talent, bringing up stardom history, and incorporating that into women's world championship storyline. This is huge. And it's hella gay. How could I not love it? And I'm guessing this will go till June's Forbidden Door? My mind is blown that we're getting this from AEW. This is not something I expected that I'd be witnessing. I'm so impressed. I'm very satisfied. Then we had some intergender situation following Adam Copeland, aka WWE's Edge and Penta's TNT Championship. Adam is attacked by Julia Hart and Brody King. Then Willow Nightingale, the number one contender for the TBS Championship at Dynasty, comes out for the save, pummeling Julian. And I guess somewhere in between Willow was misted. She had like black stuff in her face. Not not sure what happened there. There is a lot of mystery going on with Julia Hart this week. And backstage as Willow and Copeland debrief the whole situation, Stokely suggests that Willow should challenge Adam Copeland for the TNT Championship next week, with crowd actually cheering so hard. But Willow's like, no, 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 not that. Instead, suggest Adam Copeland and Willow Nightingale versus Brody King and Julia Hart intergender tag match on Dynamite. This was a cute interaction, and whenever women can work with their top stars, it's a great opportunity. Another storyline situation on Dynamite. Are you for real? AEW is giving us so much storyline, I'm shook to my core. So Mercedes Monet is doing backstage interview where she announces that she'll be challenging the winner of TBS Championship match at Dynasty at Double or Nothing. So either Willow or Julia. Oh, and we're gonna talk about that Moni. Oh, this Dynamite episode is really full of surprises. Anyway, as the interviewer asked Mercedes, either she preferred to face Julia or Willow, light goes out and then we find Mercedes Monet attacked and just moaning on the floor. <laughs> this mystery attacker storyline thing, it's been there done dead, but it's almost seeming like she's not gonna be wrestling till Double or Nothing, which is like late May. Might as well give her a storyline that takes her out for a bit. I don't know, I'm a bit mixed about this because Mercedes' return was like so big. It felt like something big was happening, but it kind of seems like we're stalling for something. I thought she was cleared. Is there a reason she's not having a match on Dynamite? I'm, I don't know, but I'm intrigued. I wanna know who attacked Monet. I wonder if it's gonna be either of Julia or Willow. Could it be Bur Baker? Could it be Soraya? I think the possibility is endless, so I am intrigued about that. And on Rampage, we had TBS Championship match Julia Hart versus Layla Hirsch. It's great seeing Layla back on AEW TV because it's been forever. But you know how these matches go. Layla actually got some cool spots, catching Julia mid move and just like dropping her, followed by a dive to outside. Then Julia seems like she got injured or something. And then when Layla approached her, she like rolls Layla up for a quick win in four minutes. This was confusing as hell. I'm Confucius. It was unclear if Julia was actually hurt or it was like part of her evil plan. If it was was the plan. I don't think she really played it up to make it look like it was a, I don't know. Hope she's okay. And then we see Anna Jay get interviewed backstage and she's like all pissed that nobody's taking wrestling seriously. Everyone's just kissing and drinking champagne. As a wrestling veteran and purist, traditionalist, she is pissed. And then Azumi of stardom comes in and says, 
Mina's stupid, but Tony Storm is a number one stupid and like can kiss her ass or something. I don't know. This was really to promote their match on Collision. If I were a casual AEW watcher and saw Azumi pop up, I've been so confused. Even me who knows a bit about stardom is thinking this is so random. So I can't even imagine for casual viewers. Then moving on to Collision, we had Tony Storm versus Azumi for the championship eliminator match. I mean, yes, another predictable match given that Tony has a title defense just next weekend, but it is still super exciting because we are seeing Azumi Azumi, not AZM, I'm looking at you Mercedes. AZM? Azumi with her high speed style of wrestling on AEW TV. And I really enjoyed this match. Tony was really working her size difference to just like laugh at Azumi at the beginning of the match. Then Azumi showed some really interesting move that we haven't seen much in North American wrestling. I love the top rope drop kick to the floor. That was like simple, but also like really cool. And Azumi kicks out of Tony's choke slam, but Tony ultimately catches Azumi with hip attack, followed by Storm Zero for the win. Impressive AEW debut for Azumi and fun match for Tony, so I'm stratified. Oh, and Mariah and Anna roll to the back mid-match, and Anna's just really mad lately. And when Mariah returns to celebrate Tony's victory, Tony gets really handsy, kissing, hugging, everything, lesbian explosion. Uh, then we see the number one contender Thunder Rosa cut a promo before our championship match against Tony Storm at Dynasty. And this promo, I think, really represents the change we've seen in the AEW women's division recently. When she relinquished her title a couple years ago due to injury, she had to do it in some like depressing, really short backstage segment. Now she got like a five to six minute promo all to herself. I mean, she said some like random ass stuff. I was like kind of confused about it. Like she just started thanking the crowd, thanking the TV audience for watching. And I'm just like, oh, okay, what's going on? It was random, but she ultimately did a really great job showing her passion here, saying that she doesn't need Diana's help, that she succeeded in her life by herself. And she's coming to drag Antonio and her clone to hell. And she was like so passionate. She was like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. It was like borderline too much and cool, but I think it was still in a cool category. I also really appreciate this because she's almost in the shadow of Mariah May and Tony Storm unhingedness, the lesbianism. So I'm glad that she got to shine and have her moment like this. And this part's new. I'm gonna try to review ROH too. I had such a good time at Supercard of Honor. They've got great women's roster, storylines and action going on. So I really wanna start including them in weekly reviews. This week wasn't the best week to start though. We got two squash matches. Nyla Rose squashes Ket Von Heed in a minute with a frog splash and Anna J squashing Let Me Know, or sorry, LMK in two minutes with the Gory Bomb. But we got some like interesting backstage follow-ups from the Supercard of Honor. We did a little bit of a replay of how Billy Stark became the inaugural women's TV champion by faking a neck injury. And backstage when she sees her mom to celebrate, her mom starts yelling at her for not having the honor. This is Ring of Honor. This is all about honor. And how Athena is a bad influence on her. But Athena welcomes Billy with open arms to celebrate her big win. This was a cute moment. I do love her mom as a character. And then we see another fallout moment from backstage where Mina and Mariah may celebrate their wins with champagne toast and a kiss. Again, we're going full lesbian here and we love it. And we got another AW show. When AW has shows, they're gonna have a lot of a lot of shows in a week. But really it was ROH showcase because ROH women's champion Athena versus Red Velvet was the match we got. And I love how in the interview on Collision, Athena was like, the world will see what they've been missing as if she wasn't the champion for two years or whatever, but we know exactly what she means. It's because it's one of the first times she was featured as ROH Women's Champion on AEW TV. So this is great. For some reason, ROH men would always pop up on AEW TV, but ROH women never did. They just get stuck there, never to be seen on AEW TV. This match was spectacular as you can expect from the two. Red Velvet really shouldn't be slept on. Like guys, open your freaking eyes. She brought really creative moves here, pushing Athena to the corner, the Harikarana into the inverted TDT. The top rope wheelbarrow was just beautiful. But Athena is the minion overlord, the longest reigning ROH Women's Champion for a reason. She catches Red jumping all the way from the top rope from the outside midair and just ragdolls around and finishes her off with a beautiful O face picking up the win. Then we got post match beatdown with her and the ROH Women's TV Champion Billy Starks. But Queen Aminata, who lost to Billy by cheating at ROH Supercard of Honor, runs out for Red's save and she lands this beautiful, beautiful air raid on Athena. Tall with red. Damn, it's good to see Queen Aminata back on AEW TV too. But this time she has storylines, she's got character, she's got motivation, she's pissed as hell for losing in that fashion. Really great to see this ROH stuff happening on AEW TV. They better do this more often. I really like this. I'm stratified. Moving to TNA, we got a contract signing between Jordan Grace and Steph Delander for Rebellion Knockouts Championship match. And the way Jordan cooked Steph here, aka SDL and Met Cardona, she says, I already defeated you before and your boyfriend pointing at 
Cardona and your boyfriend's wife, aka Chelsea Green, when she was an impact. <laughs> this was so gag. Then she goes, I'm the juggernaut with Cardona going, don't talk to her like that. Then Jordan goes like, I wasn't talking to her. <laughs> Jordan is really surprising me lately. Like I knew that she was badass in the ring, but she recently outed herself as a full on diva stan. That video of her crying at meeting Foxy. I love that so much. And now she's owning on the mic. I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. I can't wait for this match. I also love how TNA thought they don't have enough competitions for Jordan inside the company. So they're bringing SDL. They also announced Miyu Yamashita match. So we're getting that soon. Anyway, this contract signing per usual doesn't end well. It ends with Jordan Grace going through a table by Steph. It was great. Then backstage, we see this cute moment where Ash by Elegance tries to pull a trick saying, oh, Steph won the number one contender match as my replacement, so I should be the number one contender, that bullshit. But the authority, Santino Morella is like, next crazy. We also see the system trying to pair Masha and Alicia Edwards for the Knockouts Tag Team Championship opportunity because Killer Kelly's taking time off. And then we see Decay ask for their rematch clause for the Knockouts Tag Team Championship at Rebellion against Jody Threat and Danny Luna. Wow, that was a lot. But that is what we have for the Women's Wrestling Weekly. Things are really different because A AEW is like really trying with their storyline. Things are really popping. I'm really liking it. The reviews are getting a little longer, which I'm a little worried about, but it is what it is. The wrestling's really good. And also just don't forget to subscribe. There's so much interviews coming out. Literally, I thought I'll be taking some time off when the mania is done, but I have so much freaking work to do. There's a lot of interviews to edit. Some of them are kind of time sensitive. You know how it goes. And I also just filmed Hall of Fame Toot and Boot episode with Kimura Hall. Literally, I got like 100 DMs about it. Even DMs from like the wrestlers themselves. So, so this is a highly popular episode. So I get it. So that's going to come out very soon too. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at DSN and ring the bell DS on Twitter. And I'll see you next time. Bye.